This video will cover the last type of nomenclature uh, that I will teach you. It's called uh, nomenclature of uh, things that are molecular formulas or sometimes they're also referred to as covalent compounds. Okay, when naming molecular compounds, the first thing you need to do is be able to recognize what a molecular compound is. Well, basically a molecular compound is going to be uh, a molecule that's formed by two non-metallic elements that share valence electrons. I mean, and sometimes you'll hear me I uh, use the word covalent. That's also kind of a, oops, covalent. Yeah, let's try it again. Covalent, okay? So you see two parts, co and valent. Co means together, right? Co-pilot, co-captain, co-worker, whatever. There's something together. Valent implies the valence electrons. Okay, and so uh, if you have two nonmetals, so two things to the right of the stair steps, uh, you guys know that they all have like four, five, six, seven valence electrons. They're getting really close to their octet. They really don't want to give any up. And so sometimes they actually share. And so they form these molecular compounds. Okay, the first rule for naming a molecular compound is that the first element that we list will generally be the least electronegative of the two elements. So largely it's going to be the one that's furthest from fluorine on the table. Or another way to think about it, uh, the ones closest to the metals. And that first one you simply use the element's name. And so like if it's oxygen, it's oxygen. If it's nitrogen, it's nitrogen. You don't change them to oxide or nitride like when we, uh, like when we did when they were ions. So if it's molecular, you just name the first element. Okay, and then the second element, you're going to name it as if it were an anion. Uh, all that means is that it's going to end with ide. Okay, so this is the chloride, fluoride, bromide, iodide, sulfide, selenide, nitride, phosphide, whatever. Okay, so just like we have done in the past. Uh, then the only thing that's different is that we now will use prefixes to tell us the number of atoms of each element present. And you'll want to get these down and you'll also have to commit these guys to memory. And so that's something that I would do if I were you. Fortunately you probably already know a good portion of these because they kind of go along with geometry. Um, but these are the prefixes used for molecular compounds. If you have one of something, it's mono, two is di, three is tri, 4 is tetra, 5 is penta, 6 is uh, hexa, 7 is hepta, 8 is octa, 9 is nona, and finally 10 is deca. So you need to have those 10 down and their meaning. So what the prefix is, how many it means. And then the rules for naming molecular compounds, very simple. Uh, you will never use the prefix mono with the first element. So you just don't do it. Uh, likewise, you never want to reduce the subscripts to the lowest whole number as you did with the ionic compounds. Let me give you a real quick example. This is one that maybe you're familiar with. Uh, this is a molecular compound. You learned this probably last year in bio. C6H12O6, right? That's glucose, a simple sugar. If you notice, 6126, those are all able to be reduced. You could write it as CH2O. In fact, um, this is something in chemistry called an empirical formula, the lowest whole number ratio. But if you want to communicate glucose, you don't do it in this fashion. This is the formula for glucose. So with molecular, you cannot simplify. With ionic, we simplify it all the time. You wanted that lowest whole number ratio. With molecular, you may not. And so here, let's just practice a few of these. Uh, using the rules we've already, we just kind of talked about. Very straightforward, very simple. There's nothing magic about these. You don't cross anything. You don't zip it or unzip it. You don't reduce it. You don't have to check charges. Nothing. You just name the cation, name the anion, and then if there's any number that's, uh, you know, more than, well, any number, really, you have to indicate what it is with one of those prefixes. The only one you don't ever use is mono with the first one, and that's it. So pretty straightforward. All right, so looking at this first one, NO. So we don't want to use mono for the first one, so we just call it 
nitrogen, and then there's one oxygen, so we have to say monoxide, nitrogen monoxide. For the second one, still only one nitrogen in the beginning, so we just call it nitrogen. Since there are two oxygen, we say dioxide. With the third one, N2O, now we have more than one in the beginning, so we have to say dinitrogen, and then this is monoxide for one oxygen. You do have to say monoxide for the second. Okay, the next one, we have two nitrogens, so that is again dinitrogen, and three oxygen, three is tri, trioxide, straightforward. The next one, N2O4, dinitrogen, tetroxide, you can say tetroxide or tetroxide, I don't care. The only thing you need to be aware of, you do not reduce. And then finally the last one, dinitrogen, and this would be penta or pentoxide. I don't care if you put penta or pent, but that's it. All right. And here we're going to do just the opposite. Now I gave you some names. We're going to write the formulas. Once again, straightforward. I mean, all you do is you read it, and it tells you how many of the first element, how many of the second, and you just write it on paper. That's it. You don't cross anything. You don't unzip, zip, nothing. You don't alter anything. Don't try to reduce it. You just name it as is, or write the formula as it's named. So carbon dioxide, that tells me there's one carbon. There are two oxygens, CO2. Carbon monoxide, one carbon, one oxygen, CO. Sulfur hexafluoride, there is one sulfur, hexa is six, SF6. Carbon tetrachloride, there is one carbon. There are four chlorines, CCL4. Dinitrogen pentoxide, so there's your two nitrogens, oxygens, there are five. And then dichlorine heptaoxide. So chlorine is going to be Cl and di is 2. Oxide and hepta, hepta is 7, so it's Cl2O7.